And hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Morrow. I am an artist and an author and a lover of all things holistic and nurturing and colorful. Um, and I recently wrote and illustrated this book called The Keepers of Color. And it is a, um, it is a guidebook uh, to help you find your purpose, your calling, uh, your mission in life, uh, in, the, in the sort of oil or essential oil life world, maybe that's finding your why. But it's a book that helps you find that, not only your why, but also your how. So we'll get to this in a second, just a little bit about me. Um, I have been an artist my whole life. I grew up in Vermont and was surrounded by the lakes and rivers and nature and was always intrigued by a sense of what's going on underneath here? What, how are these plants and animals and nature spirits sort of speaking to me and talking to me? And nature was really my, my first entryway into the mystery or the universe. And as an artist, I've, 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 I've been inspired by that and kept that as my, uh, my muse, essentially. And I wa always wanted to create artwork and inspiration that pointed back to the natural world and also pointed back to a, a natural way of life. So uh, I've done a lot of graphic design in my world. I've done uh, things for many musicians and entertainers and, and uh, brand design for the health and wellness world. Um, and uh, about a year, about a year or two ago, um, I just wanted to put something um, of my own out there. And this book, The Keepers of Color, was was my version of that. I realized through being an entrepreneur myself that um, I wanted to see what my own heart could do in the marketplace and how to then write a book that that would help others find their own unique offering and um, create that, articulate that, uh, build that. Uh, build those pipelines for that and um, offer, it to, offer it to their respective communities and the world. And so The Keepers of Color is a book that's based on the hero's journey. The hero's journey is a phrase uh, developed or, or coined by Joseph Campbell. And it's a, it's a, it's a archetypal um, journey from leaving uh, your current home or current state of consciousness or current environment or state of things into an expanded adventurous uh, sense of, of wonder and also, um, you know, heroic uh, accomplishments. You go, out, you go from where you, where you are now to what might be called the ordinary into the extraordinary world and then kind of come back to tell about it. So most of the movies and the novels that you've all seen have been inspired by uh, speak of that, you know, that's uh, Harry Potter, Star Wars is a, is a great version of that. Uh, Luke Skywalker being an ordinary farm boy and then in getting this call to adventure to be more than he is right now, that, that we know somewhere inside of us that our heart has more to say, more to offer, more to experience, more to taste, and more to share. Uh, but it can be scary and confronting and our normal environment may not be conducive or even helpful for that. And it can take a lot, especially when you have family and friends and loved ones and a steady job to upend that and uproot that, to, um, to you know, leave the safe confines of that, to get out there on the skinny branches of life and see, see, what else, see what's calling, see how, see how we might be used in a, in a, in a more beneficial and, and, and larger capacity. And so that adventure is something that we all uh, can take part of and it can look a million different ways. It can look like entering a new relationship. It can look like entering a job. It can look like going back to school or entering or, you know, leaving college university or university into the real world. It can look like starting your own business. It can look like doing anything, losing weight, you know, getting, uh, exploring exercise, any of those things. It can look like where we, we go from a normal sense of life to uh, uh, extraordinary someone and this book is a was written uh, to help you with that it was help you to transition I'm not sure if any of you I'm sure most of you have gone to a workshop or a or a um, uh, like a course a weekend course or a seminar or a class and you're all jazzed up and inspired um, and then you know by Monday or Tuesday of the next week where you're sort of back in the sort of rut or back on the hamster wheel again. I'm like, where did I lose? How did I lose that magic? So this book is also helpful for that to help you integrate and continue the journey and continue staying steeped in that wisdom so you can continually be nourished by it and then bring it to your own life. So that was a lot. If you're still with me, which I hope you are, which I trust you are if you're watching this, uh, we're going to dive in. 
So the book is called The Keepers of Color and A Creative Hero's Journey into the World Within. So I am a firm believer in has something to say and that there's a world, a literal world that could be the world of your imagination, the world of your dreams, the world of your hopes, the world of your inspirations that wants out, that inside wants out. And those, that takes something. It takes something to actually construct or bring forth what is within you. But I believe that that is the greatest adventure we can all do. Um, and so this book for me is a, it's a journaling exercise. It's a, it has cre creative exercises, artistic ones. It's also got a, a little bit of a mythology to it. So I'm going to read this real quick uh, for you. And you can, if you listen best with your eyes closed, you can do that. If you uh, just want to watch me talk, you can also do that. It's a little story time, a little story time for a second. So this is a tale that reminds other tales. It's their time to be told. So I would say listen as you listen to me. See where this resonates and see what this inspires within you. So this is a tale that reminds other tales. It's their time to be told. Once inside a time, the world within was full of color and light, imagination and creativity, the laws and loves of the land, held in balance from all directions by the great mystery. The great mystery has a million names, all of which point to the loving, luminous source of life that dwells inside every atom and everything. It is the benevolent force that pumps blood through our body, guides rivers to the ocean, spins the planets in orbit, it turns winters to spring. Stretching from one corner of the world within to the farthest reaches of the world as we know it, span the rainbow of remembrance. The rainbow was a brilliant and beautiful bridge that connected the heavens to the earth and the eternal to the present. It was a resplendent reminder that the magic could, not be, could be found not in some faraway land or on some enlightened mountaintop, but right here, now, in this breathtakingly majestic world. All creatures who dwell beneath this colorful curve believed in the power of possibility. It was a place where dreams mattered, and every being was guided along their one-of-a-kind journey to live out a uniquely magnificent purpose. To ensure that the rainbow of remembrance shone morning, noon, and night, the wisest of sages throughout the kingdom were employed to safeguard the spectrum. Each was assigned a hue in the rainbow, conveyed a virtue to live by, and offered a talisman for the taking. Collectively, this kind and these kind and courageous custodians were called the keepers of color. The keepers were a festive celebratory bunch entrusted to color in everything under the sun, from bird wings to coral reefs to the nuances of nature, were all painted in praise and play. Wherever there was color, there was life. But as true with guardians of anything sacred, the keepers of color would all soon be tested. One day, and no one, was quite, and no one quite knows how or why, Though many denied it or looked the other way, it started to happen. Dreams began disappearing. Like a thief in the night, something invisible and unseen snuck in, and soon the world within became subdued, covered in a hazy, nebulous fog of forgetfulness. The world was in a crisis of color. A mysterious shadow formed like a sedating mist atop the land. It tore apart families with strange neighbors and isolated nations. Distraction and devastation ran free, while chaos and suffering grew into merciless tyrants. Something needed to change, but something was unwilling to. Thankfully, even amid the surrounding gloom, there was a glimmer, a small yet immensely powerful seed of hope. Within the seed, the destiny of the world and the promise of its soul rested. The keepers sent out calls for help across the kingdoms, hoping that someone, anyone, would answer. Their calls beckoned to those who would break out of their protective shells of comfort and conformity, inviting each being to sprout new, newly towards a new life and push push beyond the all-encompassing darkness into the light of another reality. Little did they know that help would arrive from the most reluctant and unsuspecting of heroes. And so that hero is you, but that also hero is the protagonist of the story who's named Color. And this is Color. Hello. And Color starts us off by saying, hi, I'm Color. You might not remember me, but I've known you your whole life. You see, I live inside of you. You might not remember that I live inside of you. You could say I'm a pigment of your imagination. Uh, I was, I've been meaning to talk to you. I've been meaning to talk to you. I've got something I've got to say to you. I made such an embarrassing mistake. You promise you won't be mad? Okay, here goes. I lost your dream. Color lost your dream. Your vision, your calling, your mission in life. I lost it. 
I was supposed to be looking after it and, and, and making sure it didn't wander off or fly away, but I got distracted by the life you weren't really living in, the busyness and the drama. And when I looked back up, it was gone. But the good news is it's still inside of you. All we have to do is go looking for it. So that's the setup of this book. This book is, if you've lost something, the, the, the sort of zeal for life or the lust for life or, the, or your inspiration or like this, I know there's more color, this guide and this book uh, will help you find it. You, you go through this intentional sequence journey to begin to look within and see what does light you up um, and how you might bring, bring that forward. And so when you say yes to this adventure, which you do, uh, there are a series of exercises that uh, asks things of you and you're going to have to color and be artist artistic and break out of your, break out of the, I don't think I can do that or I don't have any creativity within me. I believe wholeheartedly, and I, and I say this sincerely, that everyone is an artist. Everyone has a form of creativity, even if you're an accountant, even if you're a lawyer, even if you're um, a construction worker, even if you are an essential oil dealer you are inherently creative and that's actually what this that's what this entrepreneurship uh is it's in a, it's in a it's an opportunity to create literally create the life that you know is possible and it's an empowering one and, and it's amazing and so these characters and the keepers the keepers in this book who we're about to meet are cheerleaders on your path they are archetypes who um will bring forth a different dimension or different skill set within you uh, for those of you not familiar with archetypes, archetypes are mm, the, a lot of psychologists have discovered that they're almost characteristics unique in all of us. So you could say the athlete or the warrior. And even if, you never, even if you've never played sports or think that you're very tough, that sometimes your mental toughness of like, I'm just going to plow through this. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this done, to get the job done, to be victorious. Um, the caretaker. A caretaker is someone who just is inherently nurturing. Um, the catalyst, the catalyst is that person who, or that, that characteristic that says, yes, like, let's get started. Let's do this. Let's begin. Uh, I'll be the first to make the call. I'll be the first to make a move. I'll be the first to say, I'm in, um, the seeker, someone who's always looking for, uh, the deeper meaning of things, to look beyond or to, is, is, is insatiably curious. These different characteristics and these archetypes um, live within all of us and they can all help our business. They can all help bring forth what is within us and help us. We can kind of call upon the energies of them, the, uh, their, their inherent um, yeah, qualities and skills and gifts to use on our behalf. So as we go through, um, Color introduces us to the keepers. And this first character is called Oido. Oido is actually a Spanish word, which I believe means ear and also to listen. It means to sort of hear with a, but almost uh, with an inner ear, like a, um, a I'm, I, I hope I'm not completely messing this up, but this is what I've researched, that there's a, like an ear within the ear to hear and train the subtleties. And so when there's a calling of ours, when there's a, a deeper sense of purpose, we might not actually hear that with our physical ears, but the ear of our soul or the ear of our spirit or the, the ear of the universe or, 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 or the call is being whispered by signs and by, um, by people in our life, conversations in our life, uh, an urging or an, an intuition in our life that is calling to us. It's a different kind of ear that a widow, who is this dolphin, uh, helps us hear. And so um, a widow is the keeper of the color blue. He's the purpose, the porpoise with a purpose. Um, his virtue is listening to the heart. Um, his affirmation is, I trust my inner guidance. And so this first little experience is you get to color him in, whatever color you want, whatever, that you cannot do this, you cannot do this incorrectly. Um, and creativity and, and a kindergarten-like sense of play to be able to be, begin to color him in without it needing to be perfect or without it needing to, you know, be framed on a museum wall begins to sort of show you that there's a process here, that, that creativity is, a, is never finished and that it's playful and it can look like, it can look like a, you know, elementary, an elementary school and that to be able to learn along the way is, is and to be a, have a beginner's mind is just something so needed um, on the journey of anything to bring forth into the world. So that's a widow, and uh, a widow starts with a couple exercises. There's always a light exercise, 
um, and a shadow exercise. And so there's journal, journaling prompts over here, that little, uh, little sections that you can answer. So where have you lost your way? Um, and where is your intuition currently guiding you? And these questions, I call them within queries <laughs> instead of inquiries. that see what's already there kind of percolating in your soul um, and see what wants to be shared and said and so you get to answer those and you might not even realize oh wow that's actually that's actually happening right now that's actually going on within me and it's a way like I said before where inside wants out and to give voice to that so by the time you're done with this whole book you'll have seen I just went on a journey inside myself I had no idea that these treasure that or all this was going on and now that I have a, a place and a platform to bring it th like forth, if I've said it here, I can say it out loud to others as well. And this book is fantastic to, to do in groups as well. Um, you might want to find groups within your team or use this as a, like an incentive to, to, um, to, as a gift to give people who have, who have um, advanced in rank. But I recommend doing this with team members um, and you know, breaking it up. This honestly is a, is a year long curriculum. Um, and you can break it up uh, however you like. Uh, there's, there's a whole set of instructions like a game board or a, or a board game set of instructions in the beginning. And I recommend, I put in, in the very beginning of the book to do a page a day, but I think you could probably do like a page a week or a page every couple of days. You know, you can set your own pace. You could probably do a, a keeper every week and go over that with a group and each one comes with its own lessons and you can really uh, begin to, um, you can begin to, connect with others and see that, oh wow, they have a whole world going on within them as well. And we are, we are all um, incredibly similar. So that's how we do. And then he, you know, the next page, he, he asks you to uh, draw on your ship, your, the sail of your ship and de decorate all this. Like what's the vessel? What is your, if you're building your pipeline, if you're building this new life, uh, what do you need to hear? Is there a mantra? Is there a saying like, I believe in myself, I can do this? Um, you know, victory is inevitable, patience is a virtue. However, you want, whatever reminders you need to, to, you know, this could be a symbol, it can be a sun, it can be a hummingbird. Whatever you need to see to remind you of um, this intrepid adventure log. Um, and then lastly, in each, 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 after each keeper, uh, they give you a, what I'm calling a keepsake. It's a talisman. It's like a, like a tarot card. Um, a little reminder of that lesson you just learned. So because a video is all about listening and hearing, the conch shell is a, is a, is a metaphor or a symbol that represents, um, that represents not only like you've probably seen people trumpet that it's, a, it's a, it sounds a it sounds not only alarm but it sounds like a, a it announces an arrival of something it announces, it announces like from here on forward this is new this day is new this life is new this um this adventure i'm on is new it says no longer was no longer you know out with the old in with here i am world um wonderful so that was a widow and then next up, the keeper of the color green is Tuga. And Tuga is the turtle of tolerance. All about, um, hey Courtney, are we, how are we doing? She's just listening over there, okay, great. Tuga is, um, Tuga is uh, the turtle of tolerance and all about teaching us patience and giving us the, uh, the ability and the reminders to really go one step at a time, to stop and smell the roses, to as we can be busy, busy, busy trying to make more, earn more, learn more, to really settle down and be present with exactly who's in front of us, the tasks in front of us, and to take our time. And that uh, the new world we want to create is going to take time. And the new business and the new life we're going to create is going to take, um, you know, it's going to take uh, incremental effort. Uh, so Tuga gives us some exercises. This is one of my favorite. This is one of these like little mandalas in a very intricate turtle shell that Tuga has. Um, and this is gonna this is gonna be a difficult task for people is to sit and just be with this level of detail and this level of minutia. Um, but I believe you know that there's plenty of sayings that say how you do one thing is how you do anything. And so to really, really slow down and give this your attention is everything. As an artist, I learned how to draw by just copying comic book characters, superheroes, and you know, 
really making sure I could get the lines exact and straight and perfect. And I put my 10,000 hours in early, but there's just something so undescri- indescribably moving and, and transforming when you can give all of your attention to the moment in front of you or the task at hand. And so often in this multitasking world where we're doing business on the palm of our hands or or like, you know, probably you know, talking while driving or doing a million different things, um, we may not actually be present for any of them. So this analog version of, of coloring just helps us, re- you know, helps us strengthen those faculties that we have. And then you get the uh, patience is the key. Patience is the key is the, is the keepsake for Tuga. Uh, and, and I should show you alongside here. Um, there's a little story, a little mythology that goes along. And the mythology for me uh, is a folk tale. It's a folk tale of the times we're living in and also what it, what it means to, um, what it means to go on this journey. And all along the way, color is, color is right there with us as our guide and our little Sherpa, a little shaman, even a little, he's a little shaman in training who just believes in you. And is, he, since he made that mistake of losing your dream, he's like, I'm in this with you. You know, my new pal, my new wandering, traveling, my moving buddy, my, my, uh, yeah, my companion. And he's just there giving you helpful guidance and insights all along the way. Next up, we have Ruby. Ruby is a hummingbird uh, and the keeper of the color red. And um, her virtue is just eternal enthusiasm. You know that little people in your life, or maybe you are this person in your own life, it's just endlessly optimistic. And that's always sees the best and is always ready to be uh, joyful and energetic and just bring new life into things. And just is always like caffeinated on opportunity and caffeinated on like potential and possibility. They're just amped up by, by you know, um, what's happening in their life. And so we all, we've all got a, we've all got an inner Ruby to, we've all got an inner Ruby and to learn to harness her is quite fantastic. So Ruby's got some, Ruby, Ruby's got some, uh, great little exercises here and a little light as a feather. That's her, that's her keepsake. Next up is Meow. Meow is the bee. She's the queen bee, blessed bee. Um, her virtue is pollinating gratitude and you know, she's a bit of a diva. She is a queen. She's a matriarch. She's someone who calls the shot. She's someone who uh, organizes the hive and um, uh, who people are in, you know, in service to. So the, the, the boss, your inner, you are the CEO of your own company and Miel can really help you um, delegate the tasks that you need to do or your team needs to do so you can have the empire or the, or the kingdom or the queendom or your, or your enterprise uh, be successful. It, it, it sort of, she gives a, um, a macro and micro overview of all things, all while being incredibly grateful because great gratitude is, is the honey of life. It sweetens everything and she reminds you of that. But a really cool, I don't know if you can see this, it's a really cool honeycomb uh, paint by number exercise, another little patient one. I'll be a little surprised what that is. Some of the questions are, uh, what is something you feel stung by that is not fully healed? Um, and where in your life are you afraid to stir up a hornet's nest? These are fun little questions, people. Um, yeah, so Miel uh, shares with, you, you get to work at your, you get to look at your worker bees, your helper bees the people in your life who you can just always count on and where they are with you, they're thick and thin, uh, whether it's to help you move furniture or you can just call upon at any time that they're, they're just there on your team's behalf. Who are those people? She gives you the elixir of life, a little um, honey uh, that's, you know, she's an alchemist too as well, like to be able to transform lead into gold and to transform your current mindset, your current business, your current income, into a much more abundant golden one. So the elixir life is, is that renewing energy. Next up, we have honor. And honor is uh, a badger. And um, he is the keeper of the color uh, purple, all about trusting our intuition. And his affirmation is, I am a light in the world. So he's someone who, in this book, actually guides us into that. We go into a little shadowy world. We go into our, like the, the dark stuff, the stuff that we don't want to necessarily see. And he helps us, he guides us into that um, by always willing to look deeper and um, not be 
afraid or confronted by his own shadow or, or, or things that are dark or things that are um, not seen so clearly in the light. He's not afraid to, to burrow in um, and look underneath things, you know? He's a, he's a real seeker, but he's also um, not afraid to bring light into the, into the confused or obscure places. So his is there's a shadow page and you actually have to draw your own inner nemesis. You know, where do you get triggered in life? Where is it? Is it, uh, do you have road rage? Is it jealousy? Is it, I overeat at parties? Is it, um, you know, I overspend on, on things. I, I get really jealous of, of people's Instagram followings or people on Instagram or people having more. Um, I get angry at my kids or I get angry, you know, at myself, whatever it is, whatever that one like big inner adversary that we all have, um, you get to actually literally draw it out of the shadows in this, in this exercise. And you get to see, you get to put a, put a face to it and see that little um, internal nemesis of yours that, that always, you know, gets in your way or sort of, flip things, you know, flips things up or, or uh, catches you off guard or, or sends you on a detail, a detour. So I love this. I love this exercise. And, uh, you know, to, to start a business or to do anything new and, um, and bold is going gonna, is gonna to require us all to, to confront these things. And rather than just kind of plow through or ignore them or deny them, we're taking the responsibility of looking them square in the face and, um, and calling a spade a spade and seeing it for what it is and realize that we've all got these aspects. And they're all in some kind of weird way our allies, I believe, because they're strengthening our resolve. And as pesky and as um, annoying and as sometimes formidable as our opponents can be, I do believe ultimately they're strengthening our resolve for um, our most highest and ennobled selves. And then after that, we get to dive within to the heart and see all the treasures within there. So as I told you, honor likes to dig deep into there. So not, you know, beyond all the obstacles, beyond all the, the strata and um, the caves we have, like deep within there is a well of creativity, a fountain, um, an eternal spring of ideas and, and, and you know, uh, rubies and, and treasures and, and safeguarded things that we can discover if we're willing to get, if we're willing to go past um you know these initial obstacles and this initial darkness um his questions some example questions are what are you hiding from the world um and how do you move from your head to your heart and then honor gives us the lantern of luminosity which just helps us be like a hermit or a uh you know someone going into a cave and shine shine light on those on the places that um we've kept intentionally or unintentionally unconscious. Some more myth, myth going on in the story that really speaks to the larger uh, journey we're all on. Um, and then we're going in, we're going in. So this book talks about, I remember in the very beginning when I gave the little introduction uh, that something started to steal the dream, something you know that no one was quite sure how or why, that, but something one by one dreams started to disappear. Well, in this book, I call that the gray area. And the gray area is, is our doubt, it's our confusion, it's ambiguity, it's the place of, you know, I think in, in, even in culturally or politically, environmentally, there's a lot happening. It's, it seems unsure, like where's the planet going? Where are we going? Where's the economy going? Where's, you know, wh what's happening? Where's our lives going? And this gray area can keep us stuck and it can keep us like, someone else fix this or someone else, um, someone else helped me fix my own life. You know, it's, it's, it's this ambiguous area that can lead to apathy and resentment and, and resignation. And so to go in there with color, uh, we start traversing these and honor, honor the badger uh, helps us sort of with our lantern, helps us traverse these, these areas. So um, this little exercise is called the doorways of denial. And, um, you know, what are three secrets behind your doorways of denial that you've, that you've sort of kept to yourself? The things that you don't like to talk about, those big, like, I cannot believe I did that, are those big cosmic whoopses. Because at some level, when you open those doorways up, you can see in this book, they also hide a gem, a jewel, a treasure, 
a lesson that we learn from them. Like, even if it's like, I'll never do that again, or wow, I, if left to my own devices, can be really indulgent, or um, I can be naive, or I can be, you know, not who I say I am. That they're, but uh, they're all, they're all these gifts, I think, of, of humility, um, and also uh, spiritual gifts along the way that life seems to teach us, and we can take those, and we have, we can have those in our, in our little satchel on the journey. And so, what are those? What 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 lessons or treasures did those did those jewels ultimately teach us? And then this is some uh, called the masks we wear. Uh, we've all got different personalities that we wear in different relationships and different dynamics. So, you know, who are you, um, or what character quality are you um, when you're with your relatives, with your when you're with your partner or spouse, uh, when you're with someone you're trying to impress, when you're with some, you know, with wealthy people, with someone who does, who is less fortunate than you, uh, when you're with a group of only men and a group of only women, uh, when you're with someone who adores you, uh, when you're with someone who irritates you, when you're with only by yourself, like what are the different moods or personality or personas is actually the Greek, the Greek word persona actually means mask. So what persona do you put on when you're in certain dynamics. Again, this is all about just becoming aware of it. This is a book of ultimately awareness and consciousness and beginning to look at these things that we may otherwise take for granted. I'm gonna take a little water break pause and a product placement pause because I got this wonderful, if we're doing this in oil life, this doTERRA bottle. I think I'm, I'm in a big giant stay hydrated moment. So uh, if you have a water bottle or a beverage near you, now's a great time to take a drink as well. Mm-hmm. So, our next character, thank you for bearing with me, is Uru. Uru is a spider, and she is the archetype of the weaver, someone who builds and constructs stories, who kind of holds it all together, the ultimate organizer, the, the person who can, um, or character, who can see the larger picture, and then one string at a time will either uh, construct or unravel things accordingly. So Uru is a um, uh, keep of the color of silver. Her virtue is weaving worlds. Her affirmation is, I am responsible for all that I create. So to ultimately understand, this is a great, this is a quote right here. This is what I would hope you to understand that. We are the weavers and we are the web. We are the spiders and we are the thread. That's by Shakina Mountainwater. We are the weavers and we are the web. We are the spiders, we are the thread. This notion of interconnectedness, that, that same sense of the gray area that we can seem victim to it or, or that powerless to it, that our intentional actions one by one or relationship by relationship does affect everything else. You know, it's that butterfly effect. It's a, it's a matter of that no one, no one you know, no action, large or small, or good or bad, goes unnoticed and unaccounted for. Um, some great little exercises here. Uh, this is a fun little exercise that was actually invented by Leonardo da Vinci, um, where you, in all in one sitting, you write down a hundred questions you have for the world, you, for, for the world for yourself. You just sit there. It takes about, you know, and I give instructions here, but it takes about anywhere from a half an hour to 45 minutes. And your job is to basically just write any questions. It can be, why is the sky blue? You know, um, you know, what should I have for lunch later today? It can be that either like, you know, every day or that existential or like, um, you know, really speak to the, speak to the, speak to the, the mystery of, you know, why is the sky blue? Um, what, uh, what is the meaning of life? You know, you can, you can go as big or small as you need to, but just ask, ask 100 questions and see what actually is going on in your soul. And what happens is usually the first 25 questions kind of like fly through, and then 25 through 50 are a little more uh, challenging and hard to find. But by the time like you get to 50 and 75, you'll see there's like a thematic, there's a thematic theme, a thread line between the questions you're asking. Like your soul is actually is trying to figure out a few things about this world. Um, and then from there, once you've done 100, uh, you go through, and then you find the 10 
um, most relevant questions, like the 10 that are like juicy, the fattest, like your all-star team of questions. And then from there, you pick the one, you pick what question is your life about answering? So if your life is lived to only answer this question, how would you live? And what is that question? These are big questions. But this book is awesome and on your side to begin to point to those. There's a, um, a term, I believe it's a Tibetan term, uh, like a Zen, a Zen term. Koan is like a riddle, an unsolvable riddle. It's a, it's a bit of a paradox intentionally. And koans are like, what is the sound of one hand clapping is one. There are probably a lot more. That's probably the best known one. I know there are a lot more. Um, here's one right here. But the student says to the teacher, what can you do about the world? And the teacher says, what do you call the world? It's a big, that is a, that's a, that's a, that's a chin scratcher right there. What do you, what do you, what can you do about the world? What do you call the world? That's fascinating. So Koan is here to, I would say almost incite doubt at times to really question everything in your life as a, as, as a point to kind of, to sort of show you that what's not working about it. You know, it really, he really is here to upend things um, in a way to ultimately get beyond, if, you're, if you've been the creator of the life you're currently in, what isn't working about it? And then from there, um, what would you like to create? So it's, it's kind of holding two, two op oppositional questions at the same time um, as a way to move forward and find the middle way. So it's difficult. It can kind of create what's called cognitive dissonance is is two seeming opposing questions, two seeming opposing forces. Um, but on the other end, there's this beautiful middle way that is your path lived, your path living that, living the answer to that question. And it's not, it's, it's nowhere near linear. It comes from a different place. Um, so Koan just helps you get out the poison out. Anybody you've been, anybody you've been blaming, see the little teeth have all these fingers of blaming the other. Um, you know, what are you avoiding and who have you been blaming for, you know, the way things are? And ultimately putting that finger back on you and saying, I'm going to take responsibility for this. I will change my own life. I, you can count on me to um, be autonomous in this and not be a victim and not just be so helpless here, but actually be empowered and create the world and the life and the relationships and the planet Earth that I believe is possible. And thankfully, there's essential oils along the way. Um, so yes, yeah, so next up, this is a beautiful moment in the book where you find it's a break. It's like, a, for those of you who do yoga, it's the Shavasana of the book and colors actually being held here by a little cosmic hand. Um, and there's a beautiful poem right here and the poem reminds you to rest, reminds you that we're all working so hard and just to take a pause, just like Shavasana and rest and reflect and not only how far we've come, but also what are we up to? And that um, every heartbeat has a, has a rest within it, every breath has a rest within it. And it's not all push, 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 push all the time, that this receptive nature, this yin of nature um, is needed, is needed to, uh, like the winter in the four seasons, to let everything rest again for a new life to be born. That that is, uh, you know, for, night to come and, and for us to sleep so we can wake a new day. So this is a, a beautiful moment in the book. It's a pause, it's a repose. And then we have Runa. Runa is the divine mother of the book. She's a goddess, uh, the feminine power of mystery. Um, that is, uh, it sort of knows all and sees all. And is, is almost pure intuition. Um, and she reveals things. Uh, they say there's uh, two types of darkness. There's, a, or there's maybe three. There's darkness. There's um, the corrupt darkness is where, you know, maybe evil or, or the shadowy things dwell. But also there's a, um, a illuminated darkness. It's the light within a darkness. It's the stars in the sky. It's the, the darkness of the womb that allows us to be creative and fertile and allow that process to grow. The darkness of underneath the soil for the seed to sprout. 
And so there's light in there that's needed. It might be subtle, it might be not as light as much as the sun, but a different kind of light. And Runa really represents that. And so that's a metaphor, for, at least in terms of our creativity. Whatever wants to be birthed within you, um, Runa is constantly giving that, giving that light. And it's more light within your soul or the subconscious. Um, her affirmation is, I rest in peace. So in this whole journey, we're looking for the seed of hope, which we found right here. And the seed of hope, you could say, is, is that spark. It's that, um, it's, the, it's the bit of knowingness of you. It's the dream. It's your dream that you want to forth. And so the seed of hope requires watering. It requires attention. It requires you creating an environment in your life where that you can actually nourish that. And that could be people in your life to surround yourself with. It could be positive affirmations in your life to remind you of the seed and remind you of uh, the life you're creating. It can be a, a group of people. It can be a daily discipline and in an a, a intentional practice of every day I will write for an hour or I will go to yoga class, you know, three days a week, whatever you need to do that helps this seed grow because you know it's good for you and you know it helps this, you know it helps build this little, little baby or ovule inside of you. And so this exercise here is you get to talk to the seed and the seed also gets to ask you questions. I mean, you are both the seed and the answerer, so it's a little bit of a meta thing going on, but it's awesome. So seeding is believing. Here's a little seed of hope. Um, and then we have Soba, the owl. The owl and owls are you know, nocturnal creatures who can see in the dark. And that's again a metaphor for um, just observing when things seem shady or things seem unclear, to be able to still see with clarity, even call out the unclarity in the moment. Um, her affirmation is, I know who I am. And she sees things objectively. She really sees both sides of every story. If you've ever had a friends or, or uh, you know, people in your life who, who, um, who are at odds with each other, two opposing factors, and you can actually see both sides of any situation. You can see the good and bad in all things. Soba is, is that, is, helps us see that. So there's no, there's no kind of perfect glass golden pedestal to step upon. You know, there's gonna be never, never, going to be a perfect path in front of any of us. It doesn't come with um, some mud along the way or some place to get dirty or something that's not quite, you know, absolutely perfect. And, and um, so it just helps, um, helps us reconcile all of those things and our choices because we can get so many people, so many people, myself included, can get paralyzed. And well, if I make this choice, then it, this, then I can't have this. You know, there are doors that do close whenever we say yes to something or no to something that happens. But Soba can help us rec like reconcile or recognize that and hold both at the same time while still moving forward. Um, there's this great little metaphor that's uh, partly this book about an elephant. And so there's the story of these monks, these blind monks that were each... Uh, told to hold a different part of an elephant. So one held the, and they, they were, they had never seen an elephant and they never knew an elephant was, so they were blind. And then their master or their teacher said, tell me about this, you know, tell me what this elephant or what this creature is. And so the one holding the tail was like, this is like a rope. I could tell this creature's like a rope. And the one that was holding its ear was, was saying, this is like a big giant, uh, you know, Chinese fan. It's like a big, a big, a big fan that I would, that I would, a feathery, like leathery fan. And then uh, the one holding um, its leg was saying, it's like a, this creature is like a giant tree trunk. And then the one holding the, um, the trunk was saying, this creature is like it's rubber and pliable and long and like a hose. And they were all right, but they had only seen from their limited perspective. They could only, they, they were all thinking that the, the whole thing, the, whole, the all of this creature was they were judging it based on only what they could see, their limited perception. And so that's a metaphor that we're never seeing the whole picture. We're never seeing the whole picture. And if we can remember that and see clearly what is in front of us, um, but also keep, keep in mind that there is something, we are even part of something much larger. It just helps us navigate and not take ourselves so, so seriously. And then this is the, so you know, owls are also known for being wise, wise old owls. And so this is the living library. 
And each one of these books here is, is a lesson we learn. And so the author of the book is whoever in your life has, um, has uh, taught you that lesson. So a true friend is a treasure. Uh, laughter is the best medicine. So whatever friend, just friend, or, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's a, maybe it's Jim Carrey, or maybe it's, you know, Robin Williams or some comedian, comedian that, that teaches you laughter is the best medicine. Gone too soon. If you've lost a dear loved one that uh, left this, left this world before, you know, way too soon. Who not to be. That's also just an important lesson to learn. The light of leadership. Who's a leader that. Uh, and heart broke open by. So who's sort of, who on a soul level had to teach you the really hard lesson of heartbreak, you know? But that's a valuable lesson, you know, even though it's a difficult one. And so it gives us these, uh, what I'm calling the looking glasses. It looks like a little infinity sign. And again, to see both internally and externally, or to see left and right, as above, so below, to see the two, opposing forces as, and they're in their connection to each other. Um, next up, we've only got a few more here. Next up is Leo. Leo is um, the line of leadership. And so Leo is here to teach us discipline and teach us devotion and to teach us um, fidelity to a cause or to a mission that we have. Um, and he comes with a little talisman of the, 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 uh, the sort of discrimination. And so to be able to cut out what we don't need and, um, and you know, move towards what we know to be true, what we knew is absolutely true. So uh, his virtue is divine duty. I am here for what God told me to be here for, or the divine, or what the universe is here for. Uh, he, he is called to something so much greater than the everyday or what like a nine to five job or what a conventional job is. He knows that even though I might do those tasks, I'm here for something much larger. And he calls upon like the, you know, the warrior in all of us to, um, to, let's see, Leo's here to lead us towards leadership, bestowing you both courage and conviction. He will train you in the art of being a peaceful warrior. Victory is, is inevitable when you are led by the love from your own heart. And a great, a great quote here that says, Greater in battle than the man who would conquer a thousand times, a thousand men, is the one who would conquer just one himself. And then good old Matthew Love. Matthew Love is a dear friend of mine and a musician, and he's got a great line that says, Victory is within me, and within me I shall go. So here's a cool exercise that Leo teaches you to roar, to stay, to affirm. Whatever you need here affirmed. You know, I am a filmmaker. I am a mini mayor. I am a phenomenal mother. I am a loyal friend. I am successful. I will um, reach my goals. Whatever you need to hear Leo roar for you and say with conviction and courage, um, you get to kind of have that there and then his color in his mane. Um, and he'll roar that for you. He'll help you sort of say that loud and proud. Um, so yeah, so he's got the sort of discernments, which just helps cut through fiery, cuts through with fire, with the truth of fire, um, you know, clears your path of all the drama and the uncertainty and that gray area, it slices right through it. Okay, okay, and our la one of our last little characters here is, uh, this is Vajra, she is the butterfly. So she's the, she's the trendsetter, you know, transformation, you ever seen those people who just are like years ahead of their time and are always, they're, they're leaders through style, with fashion, with vision. They, they're, they're not afraid to be like, have some flair and some color and glitz and glamour because they're kind of here to both shake things up by just being who they are. Um, Lady Gaga is, you know, is one of them. Um, who else are the trendsetters? I'm trying to think here off off in my head. Um, anybody who's sort of, who's gone, who's bravely gone first and started something new, you could, you could say, uh, you know, a Disney or a Jim Henson was that because they, they created a whole life and a world for themselves. And instead of saying, here world, here's what I got. They're like, no, no, I got my own little world. You come to me, you know, you come and welcome into my world. I've, I'm creating this. I'm a trendsetter. I'm creating a whole new world for you to walk into. 
And so that's a great metaphor from a caterpillar to a butterfly. If, our, if at the beginning of this journey, we started as slow moving uh, caterpillars who are still just trying to find our new wings, by the end, after we've really gone through this, uh, you know, if we're coming out the we're coming out the 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 other side anew. Um, and so Vajra gives us some great examples of really help finding our why, why we here, why we came to the planet, why we came here, what are we here to do. So there's a beautiful guided meditation and exercise on that. And then she crowns you with a crown, the crown of compassion, of compassion for our, for the journey, for the all of life. Um, for what it takes to go on a journey, for what it takes to be a human being, for what it takes to live in this world. She wears that crown humbly and gratefully. And when we wear that, uh, we can see that everybody's just on their own journey. It might look different. And they might be going way slower than we want them to. Um, but that's where the compassion, compassion kicks in. And we don't have to be the catalyst for all of them. We can be inspiring. We can live our own lives. And we can certainly inspire others through living our transformative lives, um, but to have compassion for everybody's unique journey. And then lastly, our last little character here is named Oyate, Oyate, um, who is the buffalo, the bison, uh, the bison of benediction. And his virtue is protecting the sacred. The, whatever you deem as sacred and special to yourself, it, to be able to create time for that and honor that, and really protect that to say, no, 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 this hour is for me to work on my business, to work on myself, to work on my Keepers of Color journey. Like I am going to create time for this and to create the communica communication boundaries uh, with your friends, with your roommates, with your spouse, to say, I need this time and I'm not gonna be bothered with this or I'm gonna stay in and do this because this is important to me. Um, and his affirmations are, may all beings be at, be at peace. And he reminds us all to um, he's someone who sees and understands the seed in all people and actually speaks to that, that alone. He knows the power of possibility in that and has always seen that, encouraging others to harness that and cultivate that within themselves and within, within our own selves. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is a beautiful one. These are, as you kind of go up in the mountain, the, the little kind of last mountain top here, these are prayer flags. And you write your prayers for yourself and your prayers for the world on these two. And let them blow in the wind. Let them, let them fly in pages of this book and sort of be out there, you know, speaking in the, in the heights so all can see. And the, the, the wind may carry them uh, into fruition. Oyete asks, what, metaf what metaphorical mountain have you climbed? And name five unique blessings in your life. Um, and also ask you, how do you walk with faith? And so on the very last page, spoiler alert, but I hope that you're, hope that you're gonna get this. Um, here's a giant abyss, a giant kind of crossing, and you literally draw a bridge, <laughs> draw a bridge. You draw a bridge from where you are to where you wanna be. And you know he's sort of there waiting for you. He's been waiting for you the whole time. And just the simple, 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 simple steps and acts and leaps and walks of faith to get you there. And then uh, at the very end, he's got a he's got a dream catcher to catch your dream. There's your seed of hope in the middle, and then you get all these little all the little keepsakes along the way that, that are hanging out um, as your as your journey has come full circle. And. Uh, um, yeah, but the very, the very last page is another artistic exercise where here's your little soil and your roots down here, and you draw what's called your tree of transformation. And so as we went to look for the seed of hope in this book, the seed is now rooted. Like you are rooted in this, in the remembrance, in these, in these colorful, uh, the, the keepers have reminded you of, of, of what you're rooted in, the, your, your, your disciplines, your virtues, your... Um, your, uh, you know, the things that you honor in your life, that the, your, your unmovable faith and unshakable conviction to this is who I am, this is what I'm committed to, your commitments. So you're rooted in that, and then you just draw a beautiful tree. That's a tree of your life, a tree of your soul, that's up towards the heavens, now that you've come, now that you've come beautiful full circle. And, uh, and again, there's a little, this whole mythology is a little journey 
uh, or it's a, it, it kind of wraps up everything beautifully um, while reminding you that happy endings um, aren't inevitable, that we get to create them for ourselves and that sometimes for our love for the journey and our love for the experience would have us continually say yes again and again and again um, but it's like this is an opportunity what are you going to do with this one precious sacred life and it's up, up to you so it really reminds you you're the author of your own life you are so the, 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 this book says a creative hero's journey to the world within by john now it's me you with you so this book is here to by the end of the book you will have written and illustrated a book as well because it'll be uniquely yours and you will have uh, brought your life to it and you will be the author of your answers and also the illustrator of everything you you draw in here so that is the keepers of color and i hope that um it can bring you and your team and your family and your loved ones and your life um rich and rewarding treasures that that you can come back to again and again and that you can that you will know yourself as someone who's capable of taking on a large task and bringing it into this world because i believe that um i really believe that when people bring their gifts to the world the world shifts and i know that everyone that i've been inspired by um that i look up to that i quote um has done that they've taken on the the hard work to go within and to the discipline and their own journey have brought forth something new and remarkable and it's changed this world. And so that's capable of all of us and I hope you will take that journey with me. Thank you so much. You can find more, you can find more about me at John Morrow, J-O-N-M-A-R-R-O.com. And the book is available online. You can find it, uh, you can find it most readily on Amazon, but you can find it at your local bookstore. And if it's not there, um, ask them to order it for you if you want to support your local bookstore. But the Keepers of Color, it's there for your journey. It's there for your team. It's there for you. Um, and so am I. Thank you so much.